React SVG animations. I had a question come in from someone who is looking to figure out if WebDriver IO would be good for testing a React SVG animated dashboard. Sounds kind of interesting. So um, I actually didn't know. I've done some SVG testing in the past, but um, I haven't done a ton of it. So I wanted to go ahead and cover it and, and try it out. I just want to show that you can get these values from the SVG using uh, using WebDriver IO. So that's where we're going to go. We're just going to let it animate every single time. That's going to be fine um, and things like that. So the first thing I'm going to do is upgrade my version of iTerm. Let's just start from scratch. Make a new directory called WebDriver IO React SVG. Done. Jump into that directory. Done. npm init dash y. I'm not going to keep doing the done thing. That's pretty annoying. Install dash dash save web driver IO. And I don't want to install anything else. Okay, so we have WebDriver IO installed. Let's go ahead and create our test script. Script, stripped. Stripped is not a thing that you test with. You test with a script. Kevin, get your mind out of the gutter. I'm still stuck on this whole Moana thing from last time, and it's just throwing me off. I don't know what's going on. Okay, so normally I test with the WebDriver IO test runner, but I kind of don't want to do that today because you have to do all this kind of setup stuff. Hopefully, I'm not going to regret it, but I'm just going to try it out. So, Sublime text, and then I'm going to just do like a, a test.js. I'm really bad at remembering what I should do in my test, so I'm just going to jump on over to the WebDriver IO website. I'm going to copy this text, and then, uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Um, since I'm going down this route, I'm not going to be able to use something like the Selenium service, or Selenium standalone service, so I'm just going to get that running um, behind the scenes and uh, start that up. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go to my URL and then you know what? I'm just gonna try going to this URL and I'm going to get the title of the page That way I can make sure that this nonsense with this error message. is just fine It's like I can ignore it. So I'm gonna run node test.js and uh, Normally I run npm test because I have webdriver IO Configured through the configuration script but because I'm doing this just through a simple node file I'm just gonna run node dot test or node tester dot j s Hello Looks like it loads, so that's good. Okay, I've got my live preview is sort of loading. Let's see if this animates open. It's kind of a slow site to load. Isn't that how testing goes? Okay, victory galley. Yeah, galley, galley. It's like a boat. No, victory gallery. So what do we want to test on this page? I want to get some information about this SVG. Uh, let's go ahead and validate that there are labels on the left side. So <laughs> I was going to type that there should be labels on the left side. Labels on left side. Labels on bottom. It doesn't have a legend. Ooh, how about grid lines? Has grid lines. Oh, okay. First things first. I got to stop this animation because it changes the SVG again and again and again. I'm done with that. So when I'm running the test, yeah, it's gonna be changing all the SVG and everything. But for now, I don't wanna be doing that when I'm trying to inspect what's going on. So I've got an SVG here. Oh, data dash reactor root. I looked at that uh, in a previous video. That was pretty cool. First things first, we are going to test in here the labels on the left side. I just wanna make sure that there are labels on the left side. Okay, uh, how do I do this? Let's see, variable expect equals require chai.expect. So I need to install that. And then uh, I'm, I'm gonna use some something called a then function. I think, I think. First thing I need to do is get the elements that match that selector. So if I jump in here, I've got um, this is the S the the big SVG. This is the main graph. This is the bottom graph, and then this is the left side. So how do I get to this? So we are going to say 
SVG element is equal to just the selector for that SVG element. Okay. Um, this is kind of different because I don't have actual control over this source code and normally I'd want to add some IDs in here. So I'm going to have to kind of fake my way through it and just say the first G is the graph, the second G is the bottom label, and then the third G is the left label. So let's do that. I'm going to say SVG element and then uh, graph is equal to that G, I think nth child of zero. It could be nth child one. I should look that up. I, th I think nth child is one indexed. And I'm going to check on nth child. So I think it's one indexed. That means that it starts at one, unlike arrays in JavaScript, which are zero indexed. So I need to update this to be one, two, and three. So the reason I have this up here is if that those uh, G's get moved around, then um, I can easily just edit it in this one spot and it makes a lot more sense to have it there. So I'm gonna get the elements of, um, actually I'm gonna get the element left labels and then it's going to return that element and I'm going to expect element, let's see, does this number change? So uh, the way that they have this set up is that it ranges between one and five and those points are gonna be a random number between one and five. And what I don't get is, why is that 10, 20, 30, 40, 50? Because shouldn't it be one, two, three, four, five, or 15? There's nothing that should be above 50. Okay, does that 10 to 50 change as it animates through? Because that's gonna impact my test. I guess I could just test that it has five. No, because look, it has six. That one goes to 60. But the first one's always 10. So I can at least check that the first child is always 10. Oh man, no, the first one isn't even 10 there, it's 20. Oh, maybe I could just test that it's 10 or 20. I don't understand how this random number is so large. Like, why is it? Okay, what happens if I console.log these elements? Uh, L. So it's gonna get that. I need to not pass that in as a string. And then I'll log that out. Let's try this nonsense out. Okay, so it returned an element, but it didn't really give me much information about that element. Um, it did give us an element back. It did find an element with that selector, but it didn't give us any information about that element. So I could do element left labels. Oh, what's that gonna do? What am I even trying to do here? Totally thrown off. I lost my mojo. So I'm testing this. I've got a line. Console, okay, so browser.element, and then I'm gonna get the G first child, let first label, and then uh, I will log first label dot get text. Oh, I need like a, a then. Oh. This is why I always code in, in the synchronous mode because you kind of end up just nesting things again and 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 again. Then function L. So we'll call this labels and we'll call this label. And in it, I'm going to log out the text of that label. Let's run that if you don't want it. Hey, I should pay attention to my error messages. Here. You know what I didn't do? I didn't return the browser. Let's run it again. Mm. Same thing, I returned the browser. I forgot how then functions work. I thought it'd be so simple just to uh, use it without the WebDriver IO mode, but apparently I've gotten used to it. Okay, um, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take that left labels and then I'm gonna do a plus and add it onto there. And I'm gonna get the text from there, get text. That's what I'm gonna do. Get text of the first child, the first child that's a uh, G element, which I think stands for graph or something. Um, and then of the left labels element. Then I'm going to get the text from there 
and I'm going to log out that text. That makes things a little bit simpler for me. And again, I'm just kind of trying to prove that it's possible to do this, not that my code is actually worthwhile, which it isn't at all. It didn't work. Didn't even get the text. I'm just like, screw you, dude. What am I doing wrong? I don't know why I was trying. I thought it was gonna be easier doing it this way, but it's obviously not easier. Okay, that didn't do anything. This is stupid. This is this is just just stupid, stupid, s stupid. You know, I've been waiting for it to load. I wonder if those elements aren't there when it first loads. When the page fi finishes loading, no, they're there. They are chilling there. Okay, I'm just gonna try installing that and see if I can get the WebDriver IO sync mode working. Oh man, this makes me feel very inadequate as a person who is selling a course on WebDriver IO and I shouldn't be able to not know how to do this kind of stuff. And I'm hopeful I can at least get this basic test running. Okay, then I can get rid of that. And then the other thing I wanted to do before I do anything else is edit that configuration file because it's going to be testing in Firefox by default and something's up with my Firefox and I've never spent the time trying to figure it out because why do that when I can just switch it over to Chrome? Dot slash node module slash bin slash WebDriver IO. Normally I run this through uh, WebDriver or the, the NPM scripts, but I'm not going to worry about setting that up right now. Okay, it's going, it's going, it's going. Mm, it took too long. Well, that's okay. That's a thing that I know how to fix. Not actually reducing the time that is spent on it, but just uh, increasing the timeout. That's one thing that I wish that uh, WebDriver IO would do by default is increase the timeout because 10 seconds just is not a lot of time to run your test. Um, I know it's a lot for unit tests, but I feel like it should be at least 30 seconds, at least, um, 60 seconds is probably what I would go with. Just a preference, just a thought on it all. So in other news, I started bullet journaling. We'll see how that goes. Promise was rejected. An invalid or illegal selector was specified. I wish it would have told me that before. Oh, you know what I usually do when I do this is I copy that out and then I come over here to my console and I paste it in. Okay, so that actually does return something. Maybe I need to be a little bit more specific with this. SVG. And then the direct descendant of the SVG. Let's try this selector. G, role of presentation. Okay, that is a lot better. That's what I really wanted. And then from there, I can do G of uh, first child. Oh, and I need parens. I think I think I need parens. No, I don't. Okay. So maybe that was the issue is that I had parentheses on that first child and it was causing some issues. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the first child of this element. I'm hopeful that this will work. Text browser to get text left label. Probably need to change it to like first label. Okay, I'm going to run this. Here's the moment of truth. Mm. What do you mean it didn't... Why does the first child not work? Oh, I know why it doesn't work. Because it's not the first child. It has to be first of type. Line is the first child. First of type. That's what I need. Okay. I'm going to run this in the background, and uh, while I do that, I'm going to show you what first of type does. First of type, it will uh, check the first of that type of element, regardless of how many elements come before it. So what was happening was we have this line element, if I can show it. We, uh, in, in this uh, graph, I have a line right here. And um, that line was the first child. So this G wasn't representing itself as the first child. I was thinking since I had defined G specifically that I was looking for, 
that first child was, would work. But instead, I really needed to say first of type. So the first child, that is the type of G. Um, so that's what's going on there. I'm hopeful, hopeful, hopeful that this is going to work. Yes. Mm. And there's my 10. There's my 10. There's my 10. I would have liked to have shown more examples, but um, I just had a really hard time getting stuff set up because I'm dumb. So uh, I'm just going to leave that there. Uh, you would probably do something like expect the text to equal, and then uh, we'd put 10, but the reality is that number changes depending on the animation and everything. And uh, we'd probably have to have another wait for in here as far as that animation goes because the animation does change um, on there, but it seems to be decent. We might like throw a pause in there or something like that. So, so um, if you would give me, uh, if you would, if you, if, <laughs> if you enjoy these videos, please uh, do that thing, which is liking and subscribing so that you can get more videos like this on a mostly weekly basis, depending on how the kids act, because they kind of drive me happy. They drive me happy. That's what they do. So anyway, thanks for watching. See you around.